this is a bitcoin is a lagging high beta proxy for a failing tech etf hello everyone today our guest is francis hunt francis hunt as the originator of the hunt volatility funnel trading methodology describes himself as a trader technical analyst and teacher in this video, Francis Hunt talks about inflation, recession, dollar strength and its impact, and the future of the current financial system. If you enjoy this highlight videos, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you. Traders are worried about the world's largest and most important government bond market, as the Federal Reserve quickens the pace at which it removes one of its primary pandemic supports. When the global economy crashed in March 2020 and markets went into free fall, the U.S. Treasury market, the $25 trillion bedrock of the global financial system, broke down. Sellers struggled to find buyers, and prices whipsawed higher and lower. The Fed stepped in, devoting trillions of dollars to steadying the market. The importance of the Treasury market is hard to overstate. It is the main source of funding for the U.S. government and underpins borrowing costs around the globe for a huge variety of assets. If you have a mortgage, the interest rate you received was probably priced in relation to treasuries. The same goes for credit cards, business loans, and just about anything with an interest rate attached to it. The proper functioning of this market is paramount. That's why even small wobbles in this market can generate huge worries. At its worst, a treasury trading breakdown could cause the value of the dollar, stocks, and other bonds to tumble. Inherently, this is uh, deeply out of control. We know there's concepts of shrinkflation. We know retailers are using that to not part on, pass on the fullness of the cost losses. Um, we know government statistics overweight certain things. You only have to look at the American shadow stats to see that, uh, in actual fact, inflation is well, well deep in the teens um, in America, whilst being represented at being just under 10%, because they, it's kind of psychological number. UK popped 10.1 and they allowed it to happen and they were getting beaten up as the worst. But you've actually seen the Germans lock in 10 times the cost on futures for energies in Europe. So how on earth uh, does, uh, and, and I mean the biggest failing, rule number one for governments is um, maintain a steady, reliable, fixed price supply of energy for an economy to function. And you have to ask how they've been fulfilling on that. And they've utterly been failing. Um, all of Europe is failing on that. The UK has failed on that. Um, their policies uh, have helped done that on top of the central banking cartel and the proliferation. Everything you could do to stimulate a roaring fire, pour petrol on it, uh, you know, gasoline, get the wind a blowing, they have done. This is a beast uh, of a fire. It is, and many will go, well, it's incompetence, it's incompetence. It's not incompetence at all. For me, it's too, it's too paradoxical to do so many genius things to absolutely destroy an old mule when you want everybody to get off this old iron horse railway track and onto your new monorail system of um, surveillance finance. Uh, it's a takedown. In my opinion, you are watching a takedown of the legacy financial system. And it's actually a tribute to uh, how stable and how strong it is that it's taking so much to actually break it. Mm. So much foolhardiness, dressed as foolhardiness, if, as again, I, I put it down as intent. That will make me a conspiracy nut to yeah. some people, and I'm okay with that. Um, but you don't get to be that stupid without being having real genius behind you. Uh, so, I mean, you bifurcated the supply chain uh, with one of the biggest energy providers for Europe. You've, I mean, you couldn't do it better. You couldn't do it better. It, it points to orchestration um, in my worldview. Um, what does it mean for you in terms of your investing and behaving? Okay. We are doing the anti-metaverse economy. This is not the time for uh, virtual reality goggles and having Game Boy meetups with some mate who's a career in the other part of the planet. This is about physical things. This is actually the point where we were discussing a little bit before the Maslow's hierarchy of needs that I was highlighting um, and why I think those are that's so important. My assumption is that we've been introduced to this because I've, I've, you know, I've done all the stupid education. I did an MBA and everything else, and it's typical psychology, physiology, and high-level economics, or not even high-level economics, but 
physiological needs are air, water, food, shelter. Uh, I would argue energy is in there, sleep, clothing, and you know some degree of re reproduction. So uh, the ability to be able to keep warm, uh, be fed, and be covered. Uh, safety needs is like personal security, having some income, uh, so employment, um, some access to some resource, reasonable health uh, access. So at least at a base, if you're sick, that doesn't mean you're proactively in the longevity space. Um, but if you get sick, you have access to someone who can medicate some degree and some element of property from a, maybe a rental point and then maybe starting to get into ownership uh, and then love and belonging. So this is a pyramid. and. Uh, when you get into the more virtual realities and being able to do various things in the digital space, a lot of that comes in the Steam um, uh, space. Status, recognition, you know, you uh, fast cars, uh, big houses, those sorts of things, looking uh, high net worth or something like that so that you feel proud. And then the self-actualization, you know, you would describe Mandela and Gandhi and Martin Luther King as people who did things for others. So that's almost a spiritual um, advice point so that pyramid is, is heading on up and I make reference to it uh, ref, uh, regularly because much more in my worldview people are going to need to start focusing out of here and here and back down into there and there and this is uh, this inflation this hyperinflation I called it hyper stagflation. I coined my own phrase on it because it's going to be recessional. You already we expect asset classes to be smashed. Um, this is how you level the bourgeois. This there was during the Bolshevik Revolution. Actually, the biggest war was not on the the poorest of peasants. That they were weaponized against the farmers, the people that did uh, provide, uh, consumed less than they provided, and were moderately wealthy. Um, and that was the culling of that class and also the religious, the orthodox uh, religious, they were tortured during the Bolshevik revolution. Um, so in inherent the breaking up of family values, the breaking up of, you know, church and an order. Um, I won't always say church has been great. Uh, they were a control structure of their own, certainly. But uh, in terms of the Bolshevik revolution, they, they took the people off the land. And in fact, it led to a large amount of people starving and Trotsky's famous phrase of when the mothers eat their baby, then come and tell me they are hungry, wow. uh, which is a puritanical, absolutely satanic statement um, mm -hmm. that could only be made by a psychopath who was later killed by another psychopath who was all part of their cartel, Stalin. The whole concept of this is that we have economies such as Britain, based around London, essentially, highly, uh, you know, lawyers and investment banks doing derivative contracts and being paid, you know, uh, having base salaries of 250,000 pounds and bonuses of a million pounds. This is how we value GDP and services wow. as high value at an end of financial system. And then I'm in, I, I dressed up like my Boer friends in South Africa. You are a farmer nation here and you have a fair amount of that too in Australia. You have unbelievably scaled farms there um, and you pull things out the ground, useful things like gold um, and other minerals, which uh, used to be the case here and still is to some degree. And I argue that the quality and standard of life in uh, South Africa, Australia and uh, New Zealand, for example, because I, I know that's your core base, those currencies may actually do relatively better than what I see coming for Britain, Europe and the Asian highly financially leveraged economies such as Japan. And my argument is none of that matters. The earthquake is coming. The ground under whatever you're thinking of buying is moving and it won't matter if it's an apartment, a house or a, or a, a 30 uh, unit block because you're a high net worth guy. It's all going to fall down on account of Teutonic plates underneath you shifting. And that is the macro. And the macro starts in the debt and the FX markets. And actually, you can build wealth during this period. So also, some people say, oh, my message is a very miserable message. No, it's an opportunity. You can't have the scale of crisis and end of system that we're having and not throw up immense amount of opportunities providing you understand the nature of the game. So if you revert to the first time we spoke, I said dollar dominance, and it's going to go on longer and harder, and they're going to stay with the inflation fighting theme because they let it get out the bag. It's too big a monster. You just don't kill this wild ball with the first shot. 
you've got to keep on stabbing and it's a lot of pain and he horns you a couple of times and you get properly beaten the hell up because he's a pissed off male fully grown and he's fighting for his goddamn life that's the monster uh and this is how inflation plays now you didn't get him when he was little and a currency that is still strongly proliferated that most of this financial system is built on they are tightening so they're removing officially and it does almost more damage than the interest rates yeah. that so they're taking the juice out of the plant so it's getting shriveled and dried and uh, and it affects the rest of the world because they need dollars to still secure things um despite this bifurcation so we are going to see the melt up in the dollar that's the time when the BRICS actually release a central bank digital token and announce that it's based on gold that's your point you bail out of dollar and that's your point where you then um should already have accumulated a massive amount of precious metals and i know you want to talk about precious metals there so, so jump in and give me a comment and i'm going to pull up the gold silver oh, ratio yeah. so let's call it three stages and i'm just going to say problem reaction solution we are yeah. in the problem phase where the dollar bashes the rest of the world okay. and we are going to have to accelerate into that phase far longer so the cbdc uh, of the BRIC nation option as a possible scenario. We don't know the future, I'm guessing, uh, but that's the surveillance finance. They want us all to sign up for no questions asked. How do you do that? You create a lot of pain. That's the reaction part. I'm not yet in any pain. I still have a business and I still have income. Once they've made everybody uh, bankrupt or ward of state in terms of financial and the supermarkets empty, then I know we're in peak pain phase. At that point, you are stressed, you have low resistance, you'll sign anything the government's put in front of you. But that will Francis, be your biometric. Do you, do you really think it's going to get to that level of chaos? And, and, and you know, when you're talking about um, a, a, the reaction is going to be, do you think it'll be that severe? It hasn't yes. been severe in the past. Why now? Because <laughs> this is the moment we kill the old system. And to kill an old system, we're all deeply embedded in the system. It's almost like we all ticks on an old cow. Um, they're going to come and shoot that damn thing. The, the blood's going to stop coming past for uh, the, the, all the parasites uh, on that animal. Uh, and that's when you've got to hop. And that's when you're now no longer eating. You no longer got the shelter of its fur, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, excuse that analogy, but truly it has to get that bad. Um, inertia is an incredibly powerful force. Yes. Um, how do you create sufficient momentum to get people who don't want to move who are deeply suspicious about the, the technology surveillance finance you're going to be ramming down their throats. How do you get them to accept something that the smartest of them all realize is not going to be good for them? You lock them out in the Fear. cold and starve them. Hmm. Yeah, Fear. You've got to. It's, you've, got to, it's, you've, got to you've got to create something so horrible that they are forced to accept. I want to and find even out those what... that riot... But martial law they want full control they want totalitarianism this oh, okay. is a bolshevik communism that is technocratic okay. and oligarchical i think it, it, i mentioned this just recently there are industries that won't be needed anymore retail banking for man in the street i think you'll either lose it entirely or have a greatly reduced retail mm. banking concept this right. one central bank digital tokens are gone discount airlines another one you know they don't want peasants to travel watermelon communism is here you you're spoiling the biosphere in you know the up top there uh that, that it's only going to be expensive it's literally going to be business class and private jet only uh, um really so i think there's a lot of industries that probably going to get uh, a hard hard landing and it may not exist anymore. So freedom of movement, your ability to be able to go anywhere on this planet at quite a reasonable price. No, 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 you're killing the planet. So my statement is, Kathy Wood's failing ETF, which has had record withdrawals, by the way, last month, is a low beta leading proxy for Bitcoin. This was already diverging to the downside. It was making a lower high and a lower low. Bitcoin still made a marginally higher high here. Then it had to play catch up. Look how it threw down relative to off. Then a small pause, wow. it had a pause as well. Look at these rally highs. Yeah. It had a pause there. Arc had a pause there, but isn't much lower. Bitcoin overshoot major down leg. This is just winding up a little bit more for its next leg down. 
you're looking at a leading indicator for Bitcoin. All the joy and all the chest beating about what a pristine collateral um, XYZ, it is digitized money that is tracked, traceable, and the scarcity, all of this. I'm sorry, the way the market is treating it since March 2020, this is a Bitcoin is a lagging high beta proxy for a failing tech ETF. And wow. boy, do the guys hate me saying that because it, it smashes so many uh, dreams. And this is what's been shown currently. So what this actually means is in this economic environment, this is definitely not an asset. If you won't buy, go and buy the ARK ETF, why the hell are you uh, rushing into Bitcoin? Because it is outperforming to the downside a failing ETF that has had record withdrawals. So think how many people are exiting Bitcoin to yeah. have the similar narrative of record withdrawals that goes with an ARK ETF that is going down less. This is technical proof and it is lagging. It's not a boss. It's the God market of crypto, but it can't even be a boss over um, a failing ETF that's in a lot of high risk beta proxies. This is a this should be a cold shower for people. Since June 2021, the Fed has been letting a small number of bonds mature without being replaced. Starting this month, the Fed will allow up to $60 billion of treasuries and $35 billion of mortgage bonds to roll off its balance sheet as the debts come due, twice as much as the past three months. As the Fed backs away, it's not clear who will fill the void. And even if new buyers for bonds can be found, the reduction in demand caused by the Fed's exit is raising fears among traders of volatility that could make future market disturbances worse. If you enjoy this highlight videos, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you.